I don't think they can hear me. Or can they? Let's find out. Let me know, Fish. Okay, guys, we're just troubleshooting. For some reason, we did a test and it was working a second ago. We're not sure if it's working now. I see the little things going around it, little colorful rings around my voice. I should be able to hear you. Let me pull up the app real quick. Okay, anyways, if you guys can hear me, hi. Welcome to another day in the life of <laughs> being professional. Is it there? It's there. All right. Well, sorry about that, guys. Um, it's funny. Last time it was a bit working better on the iPad. Today, the iPad was no go. So uh, yeah, <laughs> we, we never know. I guess you never know. But um, we are. I, I hope that it's picking up the microphone. Do you think it is? I, it sounds really clear. Okay. In what I'm hearing. I'm gonna call that a win for the day. Yeah. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna keep telling a story. By the way, thanks everybody who's here. Um. And thanks everybody who is just on our Twitch live stream. We like to do, we like to pair the two together. Um, I'm really, really excited about our guests today. We've got Lauv coming on and I tell you like, and I, I said this on our Twitch stream, but I was like, I don't know. He's so cool. I was, I was kind of shocked when my managers were like, Oh, your guest this week is Lauv. And I'm wait, really? Really? He's He's so cool. And I, so I'm very flattered that he would take the time to like sit and chat with me and um, be on our amp show today. So thanks everybody for tuning in. It's going to be a really great conversation. He's such a genius artist and you know, I, I just really love his stuff. So yeah. Um, and it, part of the, one of the things I've loved the most about having this show is not only the opportunity we have to just like chit chat with people and like make these cool new friends, but also, you know, we've gotten to go to some great shows yes. out of it. And oh my gosh, yeah. He's going on tour soon. So like selfishly, I'm really hoping that he's going to want to us, you know, to yeah. come to his show. Come see the show. Okay. I, I, oh, really? Oh, well, I'll see if sure. I have time. Yeah. I mean, but, oh my gosh. Yes. Um, he's playing at the Greek here in LA, which is oh. One of the most magical venues um, yeah. in the world, in my opinion. Uh, and I've gotten to play in a lot of places around the world. So I think that's uh, valid. I'm also going to add some of his songs because we'll be listening to his music. Oh, yeah. We had to remake the show. Really yeah, quickly. sorry. <laughs> nothing nothing to see here, everybody. <laughs> we are fully in control. <laughs> um, but, um, okay, so I, it's been a funny week for me in terms of, like, relationships and dating. We're just going to jump right in with that. Um, so how do I describe this? I get a text like a few weeks ago from someone who's like, is this Lindsay? And that's always like, oh, oh no. no. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> Who has my phone number? Like no one wants to get a text like that. Like, is this Tiffany? Like <laughs> <laughs> if you have to ask, the answer probably should be no. But then he proceeded to be like, I just wonder if this is your number. I met you in college. Oh, no. And, um, yeah, for anyone, I've had the same number since I was, um, a freshman in college. So Anyways, this dude, I, I don't even remember who he was, and he wanted to come to L.A. He's like, I'll be in L.A. sometime, and I'd love to take you out. And I was just kind of like, you know, no thanks. Like, I, I hope you're doing great, but, like, no, I'm, I'm good. Um, so the other day, I, he texts me again, and he goes, hey, Lindsay, I really think that I, I want to set you up with this guy. I think you guys would be such a good match for each other. I like your impression of his voice. Yeah, like, he's, like a, he's a persona. total bro. <laughs> Try to make him sound as much of a tool as possible. Oh, no. Sorry, if you're listening, sir, um, you're great. Um, but it was just so random. And before I could even text back and say, thank you, but no thank you. Like, yeah, I, I'd rather you not set me up with someone because I right. don't even remember you. He sends me another text with Ugh. connecting me to this guy. And he's no. like, you know, Lindsay meets so-and-so, so-and-so meet Lindsay. The two coolest people I know. I hope you guys hit it off so what? awkward like what do you do I, I was like oh my gosh I didn't even want this man to give out my number anyways it was quite a um quite a funny little moment and then I like sidebarred with the other you know this guy and I was like by the way like I don't know him very well yeah. I if you feel as awkward as me like that's totally fine because like I you know and luckily he was like yeah I don't know him well either and so we both just kind of were like all right we'll oh, have a great no. day <laughs> Oh no. Oh, but like how odd is that? That is odd. That is weird. That's yeah. Very, very it's weird. Very weird. Yeah. I feel like dating in general though, like like if you sit there and just talk to a friend who's single and who's going through like the dating scene right now, it is such a weird place to find yes. yourself. It's like the wild, wild west. You don't know what's going on. You don't you, it's hard to tell what people's intentions yes. are. Ay, ay, ay. Well, <clears throat> 
I'm sorry. Anyways, it's fine. It's yeah. fine. I've, I've recovered. <laughs> um, it's, I'm still in the wild, wild west, but you know what? I, I feel like I'm in a really good place right now. Like, yeah, I would rather be, you know, single and like just comfortable with myself than yeah. in a relationship where you're not feeling comfortable where you're with yourself. not happy. And yeah, because yeah. some relationships, they can be great, but they don't bring out the best side of you. Yeah. You know, it could be a great person, but they're just not right for you. And that's a conflicting feeling. Yes, so I agree. You know, and I, I think we've all been there. Before. Yeah. And I told you, you know, if you want to go out to a movie, just take my boyfriend. I don't oh, want to go to a movie. For sure. You guys might've been on the episode several <laughs> weeks ago where we had Mark Eshelman, um, who is Fish's boyfriend. And the other day we were, you were talking to him on the FaceTime. Yeah. He's in Europe right now. And I like leaned in and I was like, by the way, Mark, Fish and I have talked about it and I'm going to be like sharing you as a boyfriend. <laughs> and he like, didn't even blink. He's like, he's like, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He's like, as, cool. yeah, we can be like the, Hey, you need me to pick you up from the airport or you need someone to like, fix something yeah. it's like like all the non-romantic things it's yeah, like, oh, yeah yes of course yeah, of course yeah, like that's that's obvious yeah. um and i'm not like a very i'm like kind of an introvert and you <laughs> both of you are extroverts so like that that takes a lot of stress off my plate <laughs> there you go <laughs> Like it's that way I have that person to call when yeah. I just need that. Like, Hey, I want to go to a movie. I want to leave I the house. I hate movies. I hate leaving the house. <laughs> That's and, great news. For me. So yeah, this could be very <laughs> beneficial in so many ways. Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh gosh. Well, uh, you want to start off with a song? Yeah. Let's, okay. let's play a song. So this is off, um, his new album. Um, Oh, which one do I want to play? Ooh, I'm going to do, I think All for Nothing is the biggest, you know, like the big push right now that they're working on. So great. I'm going to just go ahead and play that. I'm here for it. You're welcome, everyone. It's a great song. So enjoy All for Nothing by Lauf. Hey, that's all right. such a good song. It's actually um, like I, it's funny when you haven't listened to like a song for a while and then you hear it again and you're listening in a different context and mm -hmm. you're just like, wow, this is a really great song. Oh yeah. You know, like yeah. that has such a cool vibe to it. I mean, but that's kind of his, his style. He's got this like great vibey music that just is like so good to put on when you're driving your car yeah. and you, like oh. want to roll the windows down. It's like that kind Play of song. Play it loud so everyone else can hear it. And that's like my way of being like, by the way, all the other cars on the highway, I'm cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> In case you are wondering, listen to what I'm listening In to. If there's any questions, I'm cool. My hair and outfit may not say it, but just so you yeah. know. Um, also fish, let's, let's talk about what you're eating. You just, you're cool. You just ordered some delicious food. I got boba. Have you ever had boba? I actually love boba. I haven't Do had you? it forever. When I was, um, back in my days being a little missionary stomping the streets of New York city, <laughs> boba was like the thing that was like my reward mm. when we were like, Hey, it's been a rough day. Let's get some boba. And, um, when I was in my late teens, we thought it was so funny to get boba, suck up all of the balls into the straw, and then shoot them out the car windows at people. Why have I never thought of this? <laughs> well, I mean, it's it's kind of malicious. Oh, okay, not shooting them at strangers, but I'm I was like, like seventeen. I you know. Yeah. Okay, that makes it a I, little. Better. I would try it right here and now, but I don't want to. We're in know. my living room. <laughs> I just cleaned it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my, my goodness okay well this is very good though it looks delicious what flavor is that taro what the it's heck like, is taro it's like a purple sweet potato okay i'm in do you want to try some i, I do okay, okay there's a lot of tapioca balls already mm. in there <laughs> oh yeah sucked up one right yeah. in the back of my throat i asked for extra boba. wow that's very strong it's really good right mm -hmm. yeah yeah i'm a huge fan of sweet potatoes i figured you would have some interest in this yeah um and I'll tell you just a quick story. On tour, you have what's called a writer. <laughs> and oh, we no. put on there, you know, things that we would like to snack on. Because the, the venues are home for the day. We don't yeah. have a kitchen. Like, that's our that's our place. And so um, you also give suggestions for meals that you would <laughs> like. And the venue will make you some of these possible meals. We just happened to put on our writer that, like, Lindsay likes sweet potatoes. Oh, my God. For a month and a half long tour, we got sweet potatoes as the main course every, every day. day. <laughs> and we even tried to like hit up, you know, the venues in the future yeah. to be like, by the way, but they didn't, they disregarded that email. They stayed true to the first email that Our said. Our crew hated us. Oh, I mean, I wasn't actually mad at it because they would, I like, loved it. Oh, they would I disguise it. them. It was like sweet potato fajitas, yeah. sweet potato pasta, sweet potato. It was like creative. I loved it. 
And I, yeah, me, you, and Ryan were on uh -huh. board, but I feel like everybody else was like, let me go. Sweet, Sweet potatoes. potatoes. <laughs> um, anyways, that's one of the funny, there's so many weird things about touring that you just yeah. can't, um, you can't explain it. You can't, <laughs> uh, you can't beat it. But um, anyways, I think that's enough chatting about sweet potatoes and boba. And although that's so lovely, our guest is here. So I'm going to invite Lauv in to the conversation. And I am so excited to talk to him today. Da, 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 da. Waiting, waiting. This is always the like anticipation part. Like, does it work? Does it work? Wait, can you hear me? I can hear you. How are you? Yay. I'm good. How are you? I am so good. And I just have to say, like, I know I was telling our audience a second ago before you popped on that I was so excited that you were going to come and chat with me today. You are incredible. Oh, my God. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for having me. I, I feel like I came in just at the perfect time with all the uh, sweet potato talk. Oh, my gosh. Well, are you a fan of sweet potatoes? Sadly, I'm not. <laughs> <gasps> oh, my goodness. Okay. Well, you would have really Coming struggled. Real my tour. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, are you more of a straight up potato guy or like what? Yeah. What's the deal? Yeah, I always say that like if, if I want potatoes, I want them to be like like salty. You know what I mean? Like I just like the straight up starchy, salty vibe. Got you. So this is where we're going to disagree on my end because I – think that potatoes are a waste of a carb i see them and i'm like you taste like dirt why would i want no. you i need you to be sweet oh, so come on <laughs> no we're we're just starting out on the wrong foot here i'm so sorry um i give you full permission to leave at this moment if if that's necessary um yeah, I'm like, i gotta go but, tend to my potato uh garden yeah. <laughs> amazing so uh where are you calling from today um, I'm calling from home in LA. Oh, nice. We're neighbors. I'm, I'm somewhere in this city. I'm a, a native. No, I'm not native. I've been here for 10 years. So I feel like I have earned the right to feel like I'm a native LA Ian, but, um, but yeah, where are you from originally? Um, originally San Francisco, but I moved away when I was four. So I don't really feel like I'm from there. And I lived like half growing up in Atlanta, half Philly. Oh, nice. Okay, cool. So you've, you've yeah. kind of explored a little bit of the States in different ways. Um, I also have to tell you that my, um, one of my really close friends, and she actually used to live with me for a time. She's such a huge fan of you. And I actually didn't even tell her yet that, um, you know, I, until I posted this and she texted me and she was like, Oh my gosh. She was so excited that, that I was getting to That's amazing. So no little, way. little shout out from my girl, Laura, who's a huge fan. That's um, amazing. But uh, I'm curious. So you, in the research I did about you, it seems like you have just been a part of music and music has been in your life, like, from the get-go and that you took, like, lots of lessons for different instruments as a kid. Um, it looks like you started your first artist project when you were 14. And so I'm just so curious. How did you know at such an early age that you wanted your life to be, like, a musician's life? Yeah, I mean, at first it was like I was doing a piano lessons and then my two older sisters played violin and cello. So I started playing viola. Mm. Shout out viola. It's been a long time Woo -woo! since I played though. Um, mm -hmm. um, but I think it was like once I started playing guitar and I started skateboarding less, I was just like became obsessed with music. And I was like, I got to do this like all the time. All the it's, time. That's kind of vibe. All the time. It, when something, when you get that bug for something and you just like all of a sudden realize that this is your thing, it's so exciting when you feel that, like, I want to do this all the time feeling. Like, it's almost like yeah. you like, kind of found your calling and it's it's a very exciting feeling. Um, and, you know, it's funny. I look back at when I was 14 and I'm like, I definitely didn't know then that I wanted to be like what I am today. And like, I remember my first like business I started was literally it was called the ready to work girls. And me and my best friend would like, that's amazing. Um, we would hand out these business cards that were like, we'll do whatever, whatever work you want. And <laughs> like my sister's laughing at me because this is so on brand, but like literally like, I wish I was as cool as you. And I'm like, I started my artist project when I was 14, but no, I started the ready no, to work girls business. Cool. <laughs> 
<laughs> it wasn't cool. My my first artist project was called Somersault Sunday, and I have such a bad lisp. But I, well, I, I had back then had oh. such a bad lisp, so I was like, why do I have so many S's in my name? <laughs> Wait, that's amazing. You know, it's funny because. I still to this day have a slight lisp and my name is Lindsay Let's Sterling. Go. So Summer it's, Salt it's Sunday. <laughs> yeah, I you know, people are like, We could take speech therapy, but I'm like, Well it's not that bad, is it? Like <laughs> I tried it. I tried speech therapy. I didn't even know what like I think my parents just had me doing it at school without even explaining to me like why or what it was. It was so weird. I would just go into this room like while everyone else was having normal lunch and I would just do speech like exercises. It was very strange. Oh, <laughs> did that like at the time, like what were your thoughts on that? Like, were you like, why am I in this room? Or did yeah, you just kind of I kinda feel it? like I, I kind of just accepted it, but was kind of like, this is super random. Like, I don't know. Very, it's like yeah. one of those weird core memories that like, I don't really know how to process it. I'm just like, yeah, that was, I just go, used to go to this random room in the library I feel like it was like during lunch and I would just literally <laughs> get like told how I was supposed to say S's over and over. And they're like, no, one more time. <laughs> yeah. So funny. Oh, that's so, you know, it's funny. I have like a very similar memory. Mine wasn't for speech therapy, but <clears throat> I was dyslexic or I am, I guess you don't ever become non-dyslexic. Mm. I am dyslexic. But when I was in school, I remember they didn't know that yet. They just knew I couldn't read. And I went to this special class. I'd get called out of my class and they'd put me in a class with the AS or ESL, English as a second language kids. So they were kids that like didn't speak English and they were teaching us how to read. And I could never figure out why I was in the room, like in that room. <laughs> You're so like, I, what's going on? Yeah, you know, I was like, I know, I know English. Why am I in here? Um, anyways, so props to like random classrooms as kids, you know? Let's go. We may best. not relate. We may not relate about sweet potatoes, but I'm glad that we can share. We found some commonality between us. Exactly. It's perfect. Now we're, now we're off to the best of, of feet. <laughs> okay. Let's do this. Let's do this interview now. <laughs> found the common ground. Oh um, <laughs> so were there any like early influences that made you just hooked or were there any artists that kind of really inspired you early on that kind of kicked off this idea of like starting, what was it called? Summer salt? Sunday yeah well it was like all of the MySpace stuff it was like never shout never and the ready set um and then I got like really into like John Mayer and stuff like that that's so so cool um yeah good I, uh, times the MySpace era was crazy Yes, I was never, I'm so glad that I, I found you too, because I was never great at the MySpace era, like, you know, and really? luckily another wave came along. And so I had a chance to jump on the next wave because I almost kind of missed the MySpace like time. Right. Um, and once you miss a wave, it's so hard to catch it. And so it's like, oh, there's another one. Okay, I'll catch the next wave. Um, Still trying to but, catch TikTok. Oh my gosh, are you? Oh, we should hang yeah. out and make TikToks. Like, I, I'm not gonna I'm like go so as far down. to say, I'm, I'm not gonna say I'm an expert, but I have spent so much, in, like an embarrassingly amount of time studying the app and working on my TikTok. So if you ever wanna like hang and like <laughs> I need do TikTok, oh my gosh. Okay, we're both in LA. Let's do it. Let's have a do date. A TikTok. Let's, let's do it. Oh my gosh, <laughs> this just revealed my age. I said, yeah. let's do TikTok. Like, well, I don't know. What do the kids say? I don't know. <laughs> I'm as old as you. Think, By the way, my my good. assistant's here. Yeah. Oh, thank you. My assistant's making fun of me, um, <laughs> as she loves to do. Yeah. Me and Lauv are gonna do TikTok. <laughs> well, okay. Oh yeah. TikTok. Okay, that's. A, that's an open invitation. So I'm going to, I'm going to hit you up through the social medias and we're going to do it. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Um, so going back uh, um, to your childhood and music and all of that fun stuff. Um, I feel like as an aspiring young musician, it's so important to have like a support system. And I'm just curious, was your family like real, like, did you have someone in your family that was kind of like your champion and there for you as you started? Yeah, honestly, like I was super lucky. My my parents were um, always both really like in support of me doing music. My dad used to like drive us to some of our shows 
in my early bands and he would go in the back and like what mm-hmm. we would actually like make our own merch and stuff and sometimes he would help us sell the merch and he would just be the dad dancing in the back of the venue it was great it was so I cute love that does your dad still like do your parents get to come out to your shows now and and just yeah. see the evolution oh yeah no i think that the craziest is when i when i um like first went on tour with Ed Sheeran and they like flew out to a few like the, the countries <gasps> in Asia and, and came out to those shows. That was like the craziest like parent moment, I feel like. Wow. Okay. Let's crazy. just pause for a second and talk about like, okay, when you went on tour with Ed Sheeran in Asia, was it like you had been doing a lot of shows and they'd been getting bigger and bigger and then this was like the next step or was it like a huge jump to be like oh my gosh i'm performing in front of these huge rooms it was a it was a massive jump like i was i'm trying to think at that time it was probably around when mm-hmm. i liked me better it was either i don't even know if it was out it must have been out i honestly forget but yeah no it must have been out um but um i was kind of just doing you know my own smaller tours and then I got the call one day from my managers at the time. I was just taking a run and they called me and I was like, well, let me call you back. And he's like, wait, 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 wait. I have one yeah. question for you. I was like, okay, fine. He's like, do you want to go on tour in arenas with Ed Sheeran in Asia? And I was like, oh, oh my God, it was fucking crazy. It was insane. So cool. Yeah. Like such a life-changing moment. Yeah. Like, can you tell me like, <clears throat> I don't know. Was would you say that you were in, like any way more experiencing stage fright and being that kind of an environment, or was it just like just pure adrenaline? Like, what was it like? Weirdly, I feel like <laughs> the shows that were like that big, like doing like the arenas and like stadiums and stuff, is like in some way like in actuality a little bit less scary because like it feels like less inevitably feels like less personal, and I think like the really personal mm. vibes are the things that kind of feel <laughs> scarier. But the idea yeah. of it is definitely way more scary. For sure. Yeah. But then once you like step onto a stage like that, because um, <clears throat> I've been in arena tours so many times, so I know I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> I actually haven't. Um, but uh, I can imagine that it just becomes this like sea of faces and that it kind of like almost like glazes over because you don't see the individual quite as much. Yeah. No, it's crazy. Um, I mean, one of the, the coolest moments is just like, uh, I, even though I was just doing like an opening thing, like at the time I had a song um, where I'd have everyone take their cell phone lights out and oh. seeing the like arena full of lights, like right as like everything was getting dark. It was just, I don't know. It's what dreams are made of. Like literally it was crazy. There is something so magical about when you, when people pull out their lights, like as like right? stereotypical and as much as it's like, you know, every artist at some point does it like being, whether you're in the audience or whether you're on stage, there is something so magical about that. And yeah, it's and so amazing. You know, and I think something kind of interesting about it is that like, you just realize that every single one of those lights represents like, it's a, it's the perfect way to see how many people, people are there whether you're in the show right. or whether you're in the audience like it's like each one of these little lights is a dot that's a person like yeah. whoa it's crazy yeah. um it's so, sick. Uh, so now going back to like versus you know these arena shows what were some of those early performances like when you were you know in your first band and your dad's driving you to the show like do you have any re- so memories of like so embarrassing like i did not know how to move on stage at all like i was i felt so awkward like i don't know like i feel like the one of the first shows i remember doing was like in like a fire hall in like the middle of nowhere in pennsylvania and like they didn't eat like the sound guy didn't even they, there was no speaker i had to like bring like my band's like rehearsal pa system and like mm-hmm. all this like sound gear to try to like make it work um and yeah, oh it was gosh. actually with, it was actually with <clears throat> the ready set way back in the day. I'm trying to think who else, there no was a couple other bands. but it was one of those things where there was like, I don't know, maybe like five or 10 people showed up and then there was just like my dad. It was sick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, I think that that's so important. Like I, I look back at my very first performances and it's like, those are the times that kind of, I think, weed out if you're strong enough to be in this industry. If you're, if you right. can handle doing a show in front of five people and still give it your all. And right. then 
show up the next time, just hoping that there might be six, you know? <laughs> um, exactly. You know, I actually have a funny kind of crazy little tidbit to share with you too. Go for it. When I was in, when I was in college, I forget, I don't know all the details, but loosely speaking, I was so like, I was doing um, like trying to do like, like pitch writing and writing and producing and whatever. And I also like for a second wanted to be a DJ and I was asked mm-hmm. to try to do a, re- a remix of one of your songs when I was in college, like way oh, no back way. in the day. Yeah. I, f- I forget oh. by who, but it was like somebody from somewhere on your team at some point. Oh, so interesting. So it was like an official, like they were reaching out to do like an official remix. I think so. It was like, I just oh, remember being a college student and then, and then like trying to make a remix. And I, I don't know if I ever like did a good job or anything, but yeah, it was just, it was just so, yeah, crazy. Oh, that's, it's always wild to think about how like, you know, those little tiny like breadcrumbs from the past. You're like, oh, that was right. in a way just like, here I am, you know? Yeah. One no, breadcrumb leads to another full circle. So super sick to, to be, to be on the show. Oh my gosh. Well, so cool. So, so glad to have you. And you know, oh, yeah. that's crazy. So wait, you studied, um, you said producing and like script writing. Oh, like, 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 uh, well, I studied music technology, <laughs> but I was trying to like write song, like just try to pitch songs, like to like yeah. publishers and like whatever, like whatever I could do before I was really doing loud. I was kind of, um, just trying to make random songs <laughs> and like email them to people and the whole pitch game and all that. Oh, totally. Was this kind of your like attempt of like, oh, who knows if I'm going to be an artist, so I'm going to write songs for other people? Um, Was the plan always to be an artist or was that kind of what you thought you might do instead? Um, When I was a kid, I always wanted to be an artist or be in a band or something. I think it was like I was super, by the time I was graduating high school, like in the whole like MySpace scene, like I, I feel like I was seeing all these other kids like blow up and I was like, I'm not blowing up and I'm I have to go to college mm. I have to get serious so maybe I can't be an artist yeah. and then and then I tried to be a DJ but I definitely was not meant for that um yeah. and then I just yeah I was yeah doing the kind of like SoundCloud remixes and stuff like that yeah <clears throat> well it's always interesting how it's like you know I feel like I, I'm guessing that the stuff you learned in school and in producing and in like, I don't know, writing songs for other people. Do you feel like that gave you a really good training ground to become, you know, the artist you are today? hundred percent. Yeah. Like, I feel like just learning like the structure of how like songwriting works and like learning, like, okay, if you can like be structured about writing a verse and a pre and a really good hook or like try to make everything a hook, like, I don't know, just writing in different ways. And then going mm-hmm. and once I once I finally like had stories to tell, I was like, okay, now I can make my music. Um, so yeah, yeah, it was definitely cool. Yeah, and I, I do think it's fun to look back sometimes and be like, oh my gosh, all these things, you know, maybe the little side routes that I took, you know, the windy road that led, you know, me to where I'm at today. Like for example, in in college, I actually studied film. And when I graduated, I was kind of like, what a waste of time. Like, here I am now wanting to be a musician. But it's like, actually, that knowledge that I had in film has like 100% made me into the kind of artist I am today. And it's like, every every road you take, it's like, they all kind of just add into the puzzle of who you become in like, a really interesting way. Um, Yeah. mm. Yeah, I'm so, just trying to figure out how to learn more new things because I feel like I'm at, I'm like, you know, 27 now and I'm like, I'm ready to try some new shit. I have some I ideas for you, but I'm I'm really curious. What are you thinking when you say you want to learn something new? I don't know. I mean, well, f- first of all, definitely, like, I think I want to learn another language at least. That's something I've been wanting to do for a long time. Ooh. But, and I might, I, I like, I learned how to speak a little bit of German in school, but I don't know, either I could keep learning that or honestly learn Spanish, I think would be cool. Yeah. Um, Mm -hmm. I'm super into, I'm (laughs) super into like the cross between like psychology and mental health and like spirituality. So like, I'm always kind of like delving into random stuff and in those kind of, in those worlds. But I don't know, like, you know, it's like I used to skateboard as a kid, like getting back into that, like anything, I just feel like, moving to LA I don't know if you feel this way but like it's so easy especially in music to just get really wrapped in like the same cycle of doing the same things and like and just being in this like very one track headspace a hundred percent it um I 
sometimes joke that I'm like just kind of on the hamster wheel and it's like, okay, exactly. you finish the album, you make the music right. videos and do the press, then you go on tour, then you start all over again. It's, it's it does yeah. become very, um, it feels very formulaic after a while. <clears throat> um, right. but I, I love what you said about you, what you're in this phase where you're like, I'm ready to learn something new. Cause, um, I think that is honestly what saved me from, getting completely burnt out is, I don't know, every year or two years, I feel like I get this craving to like, I need a new, whether it's a hobby or like, like my most recent one was I started taking trapeze lessons just because That's so I cool. needed a new, I need, and it's funny, it was supposed to be my hobby, but of course, like anything else, I feel, feel like we artists are always thinking, well, well now how can I add it to my craft? Like, um, right. it's, so now it's any, it's, funny that it's now become a part of the show but it all started just because I, so I cool. same as you I was like I need I need to learn something new I need a new thing um right but yeah and gosh learning a language that's so so useful and so cool and like the amount of understanding it could give you for other people and cultures is just right. that's really cool 100%. Um, that's so crazy trapeze that's that's so cool oh my god I mean, I'm like, when I say that, I'm sure what you're picturing is like so much cooler than what I'm learning. Like I'm, I'm a baby, you know, I'm just like, you know, I, I, I'm just barely starting, but it definitely is. Um, I don't know. I, I think you would probably agree. Like it's so important to challenge your mind every once in a while because we get so yeah. used to, and even like good at the things we're good at. And I feel like it, as adults, sometimes we get so uncomfortable with being bad at things because we only do right. the things that we're good at. Um, right. but yeah, um, you mentioned, I'm so curious to hear more about this, that, you know, a, a comment about mental health and I've, I've seen through like your social media and the kind of music you write that you're a huge advocate of mental health. And so, um, what is it that kind of, I mean, one gave you the courage to be such an advocate for mental health and, you know, why is it so important to you? Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. I think like originally, like I for years had no idea what about any of it, you know, like I definitely went through a period looking back in college where I was depressed. And I remember I went to like the school psychiatrist or maybe it was just even a therapist, but they like instantly in one session tried to prescribe me medication. And I just was kind of like, I don't know about this. And I never took it. And I kind of found, you know, just tried to find my way out of it and slowly I think was able to cope at the time um but I you know around 2018 into 2019 I just had like a huge breakdown and it was like stuff was going crazy in my career but I was just like really really halting like internally and I was freaking <laughs> out and I was super low and I was constantly caught in like obsessive anxiety and it was just like really bad and I think, mm -hmm. um, you know, I got to a point where it was basically, aside from being more curious about seeing, you know, finding a different therapist or just being open to like, hey, hey, I have a therapist and hey, it's nice to go to therapy, but maybe if I'm not, if it's not working, you know, maybe I should like, you know, talk to other people and just see like what else is out there, you know, being encouraged to be open to that and also being around people in my family and friends who, you know, ha had some type of grasp on their own mental health, um, uh, like issues they were dealing with and kind of talking to them. And then I think ultimately yeah. being open to on the second go around being open to medication. Um, it was like some combination of all those things that finally culminated in like me starting to get better and to start to like actually understand, okay, like, like to develop like language for what it was that I was going through to be able to better describe it to people to understand like what was rational, what was irrational, like what was not just normal sadness, like what was like, yes. you know, like there's something I'm a little abnormally sad for what's going on. Like there's my brain is just chemically not in the right place. And I think the more I learned, the more I was like <laughs> felt so empowered for myself and felt so excited. I was like, wow, like I, this is so cool. And I also felt so, like it hit me really hard how how much I had to acknowledge that the people in my life who had had their own experiences were able to like help me get help for myself. Like I was like, okay, cool. Like that's it. Like I want to be able to um, share this stuff one because I'm a person that I just love 
vulnerability. Like I love being open as much as possible, as much as, you know, Mm -hmm. makes sense. And, um, I also just found, yeah, like people doing the same for me really helped me. So, um, I kind of was like, I'm just gonna be more open about it. Um, and kind of see where it goes. But, you know, sometimes it's, sometimes it's hard because sometimes it it gets to the point where it's like, you don't want to be like defined by like that all the time. You know, it's like, you're like, yeah, (laughs) that kind of thing. That's, that's so cool. I I love that you're such an advocate for mental health and like, and being open and vulnerable, like about your story. And I just think that anybody who's been through, I guess their own moment of self-discovery about like, Oh shoot. Like I have some, some stuff I'm dealing with. Like, you know, I'm going through depression or realizing that they are, they have anxiety or, you know, eating disorders, any of those moments of clarity when you come through it and then come out the other side, you almost can't help, but be like, I need to help others realize that that's not the way they have to live and that there is more that they can achieve. There's more you can feel from life. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just feel like you almost have to be, and especially, you know, you and I are artists. We make our, our lives out of sharing like pieces of ourselves. So especially as an artist, right. I don't think you have a choice than to like share that. Um, <clears throat> so 100%. tell me about the, the blue boy foundation. Yeah. So basically I, um, so I have this foundation that I started um, around the time that I made my song sad forever. And that was sort of when I was coming to terms with my own situation there. And, um, I originally just started it as a place to kind of like allocate money from sales and streams and to be able to donate them to different organizations that are working in various ways, um, in the field of mental health. And, you know, there's been, there's been times, (laughs) you know, where we've kind of like hosted online events or even like in-person conversations and stuff like that. Um, mm. it's just been, yeah, it's been really cool. I'm trying to figure out, you know, what I want to do next with it. Um, cause at the end of the day, like I'm yeah. a, there's people who do that for like a living and that are really good at it. And then, you know, then there's me, a musician who just has a heart to want to get involved in whatever way I can. Um, yes. so yeah. No, that's, yeah. that's amazing. And like, even just kind of reading about the stuff, like how you put all the proceeds of one of your songs towards it, you know, and raised a significant amount of money. I believe it's like over $150,000, like to help people, you know? So I, I hear you where sometimes you are like, oh gosh, I'm just a musician. And, you know, we all have our causes that we care about. Um, but, you know, the things you've done, they're really cool. And it looks like they're the kind of things that like make a difference. And, you know, um, so anyways, I just want to applaud you and say that you definitely are making a difference, you know, even through the messages you share, let alone the funds you've raised and all of that. So I just think it's so cool know. that, that, that <laughs> just people listening to a song can raise money like that. It's so cool. Yeah. Really, really cool. No, it, it's pretty powerful. And it also creates like a movement, you know, it creates, um, it allows your fans to feel like they're a part of it as well. And, you know, in, in a way, so. Yeah, And I also loved, I loved that you said you started to learn the difference between like, I think you said being sad and being depressed, like, oh, I'm like extra yeah. sad right now. And, you know, it, I remember when I finally started to learn the difference of like, oh, yeah, I'm going through a hard time. I'm sad. Or, oh, my gosh, I feel dark inside. Like, I yeah. that's depression. And learning the difference, um, I think, is one of the best tools. And that's one of the things I was most thankful for, like my experience when I took medication is it helped me learn the difference between depression and just sadness and like, Oh, that's a tangible feeling. And, um, yeah. So I, I think that's really powerful. And yeah, you're like, you're like, why am I this (laughs) catastrophically sad? Like for seemingly not, you know, reasons that make sense to be, yeah, to be like this, you know, and it doesn't stop and it's so heavy and it's like, pulling me apart from everyone else yeah it's uh yes yeah words like that like heavy and dark those were the words that to me started to be like oh that's depression and you know but then there's like sad which is more just situational and you know can involve some of the same feelings but it's not that same like darkness and heaviness that you're talking about um i'm curious in your own life are there any i don't know like mental health practices that that you go to when you are feeling like a certain way hundred percent I mean especially over 
the past few years with, you know, the pandemic and lockdown, like meditation has been huge for me, Mm. like huge, huge, huge. It's like such a, such a big part of my daily life. Like even if it's like in the middle of the day, I just go take a 10 or 15 minute nap meditation. I'll turn on a guided meditation and lay down and close my eyes and I might doze off or I might just enter a meditative state and then kind of go back to what I'm doing or, or in the morning or at night too. Like I, yeah, that's, 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 that would say that's the biggest thing for me. I've tried, you know, journaling. Sometimes I journal, obviously taking walks is amazing or exercise. I'm definitely like, I've been stubborn about exercise for a long time being like, Oh, like, I don't really feel like doing it, but it definitely does help so much. Like, especially Mm -hmm. for someone like me, like I struggle with a lot of like just falling into like obsessive patterns. And a lot of times it just kind of like take my day from, from a nice high vibration to like a low, like I'm just obsessing over one tiny thing for hours. Like, let me just go move Mm. and do something. And it kind of breaks you out of that. So that's huge. Um, yeah, I don't know if you feel like there's certain things too that like help help you. Oh, a hundred percent. I, you know, and I like that. The, I don't know. I'm a big fan of like meditation, and um, yeah, specifically recently, I've I've just kind of added breath work to my meditation, and like oh, just sweet. that. They're very similar, you know. So like yeah. meditation, breath work, that kind of a moment to take for yourself. I have been shocked what it has done for my mental health and my anxiety yeah. and my just my connecting myself with actually like who I am and not living in yeah. this like kind of um state of like what am I? Who am I? What do I actually like? Just right. I don't know. Meditation has been like incredibly healing for me. Cause I've done it all. Like I've done therapy. I've like yes. done, um, I've had a psychologist, I've done medication. I have, you know, I've literally worked on my mental health so hard through, you know, years and years of, um, you know, since I was in college when I was anorexic and having to break free from that. And I just, you know, like you said, this, there's this interesting connection that comes from meditation that has been more healing yeah. than anything I've ever done. So oh, yeah, makes me I, happy I love, to hear. yeah, I love, I love everything you're saying. It's, it's so cool. And, um, you know, and I, I think it's so important for people to hear like someone like you that they love and it's an artist and like, Oh my gosh, they struggle too. And, um, so anyways, I, I just, I think it's awesome. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Um, yeah, no meditation's amazing. You actually just released a song, um, Kids Are Born Stars. Um, I'm curious, does that relate to mental health at all? And if not, I would love for you to tell me like what inspired that song and what it's about. So that song is, it's an interesting one. I mean, it's kind of thematic to the album that I'm putting out um, on August 5th, um, which is called All For Mm -hmm. Nothing. Um, I'm so excited. It's been too long. I can't wait for it to be out. But um, that, I mean, you know, a lot of this kind of album and what I was going through and it's sort of evident in the song was like a lot of like looking back at childhood and being like, hey, like here I am, you know, somebody in my like mid late 20s feeling, especially at the time, feeling really disconnected from my true self and feeling really anxious and isolated and sort of caught in between these realities of like, who is Ari? You know, like, who am I really? deep down, I feel really disconnected from it. I know that as a kid, I was just who I was, you know, and I was just doing my thing. And somewhere along Mm -hmm. the way, I kind of got separated from that. And so I became super kind of into like inner child, uh, like meditation and inner child, like work and stuff like that. um, To try to get reconnected Mm -hmm. with it. And one of the things that kind of happened in that process is I made this song about, um, eighth grade when I was kind of first making music and I I definitely did not think my life was going to turn out like this like I didn't have some grand like oh I know someday you know it's going to work out for me in music but it was sort of like this me kind of going back to my eighth grade self and being like someday like it's going to work out um and yeah yeah and there's this other aspect too so sweet it's so good yeah no um there's other aspect too of like I think um uh I don't know how how you feel about this, but I felt like, you know, throughout the years of um, my music career, there's been so much overthinking of like, uh, uh, of like, what does it mean to be quote unquote a star or this or that, you know? Mm. And like, you know, it's like, yeah. it's like either have it or you don't. And I sort of just think like we're all born with this innate thing inside of us. And it's maybe it's, maybe it's music for some person or maybe it's, teaching or maybe it's reading or maybe it's 
at dancing or maybe it's whatever, you know, that there's some part of us where we unlock that like beautiful in the moment, freedom, truest self. And yeah, so I was kind of like became sort of obsessed with that whole idea of just like, we, you know, we all have that inside of us. A thousand percent. Um, yeah, I, I just love, you know, hearing you talk about like the inner child work and it's, yeah. it's such an effective like meditative or like place to put yourself it's it's yeah. like i don't know if anyone listening has done it but i i can't recommend enough like doing a meditation where you like i don't know what did you feel like you kind of learned as you were doing this inner child work like what was one of the well, biggest takeaways yeah. you can say you took from it i feel like one of the biggest things is i just realized i was so disconnected from like my playful from my like playful mm. true innocent self like i was like I yeah. kept getting these like images of me in my friend's backyard growing up. And I was like always just back in that backyard. And I was like, why am I always being taken here in these meditations? And it was like, those oh. were like my most free days of just skateboarding mm -hmm. and like, you know, I had no idea what was going on, but I was just being me. And, and I think like I needed a reminder of like, life isn't all just like regimented stress. It's not just all pushing yourself and, and, striving for things and wanting to be more and it's not that's not what life's about life is just about like being and i think i needed that reminder and needed that image yeah it's funny as you were saying you know that you were doing this inner child work my my assistant she like pointed out herself like me too like i'm there i'm doing that let's go <laughs> so yeah let's we're go. all in this together um yeah y you know and i i also like how you said like what does it mean to be a star um and that really made me think like recently I was talking to my mom and I was like telling her that like, mom, I really want to make the jump to like play full arenas. Like that's what I, and I, and I've said it to her multiple times and she stopped me once and she's like, why do you want to do that? And it made me really think. And I was like, I guess like I'm already doing what I love. Like, what is the pure motivation? Like, you know, what does it mean to be a star? Like, and if I'd asked my inner child self and like told my inner child what I get to do for a living every day, like the excitement, I've done that before. I've like imagined it and the excitement that that version of Lindsay, the gratitude like that comes from right. like that child inside of me is so strong. And it just yeah. makes me realize like, I'm doing it. Like, I like, what does yeah. it mean to be a star? I I'm living it. And yeah. you know everything else is like gravy and cool but like um anyways i thought 100 it, percent. It's, it's a powerful thing it's a powerful exercise to do and i love the music video like there's even dialogue in it um Thank you. did you come up with that <laughs> idea was that was this like it your was creative kinda, brainchild um it was it was it was kind of collabing with um hannah lux davis the director i mean she's insanely she's amazing mm -hmm. she's so good um Mm. But yeah, I knew I wanted to do something kind of in that vein, like revisiting, uh, kind of telling a bit of, you know, of a fantasy story of like kind of me at that age, but kind of going back to him and, and giving him some confidence and stuff. So, yeah. And especially yeah. after hearing like the inspiration by the song, I'm like, oh, it totally makes sense. Like, so everybody should go watch the music video. It's so good. And, you know, it, it did you. make me think as well of like, you know, what would I say to my little child if I, if I met little Lindsay and, you know, yeah. but I actually want to take a moment and play the song for everybody. So um, this is Kids Are Born Stars. So good. And if you guys want to pull up the music video while you listen, it's great. So here we go. Woo woo! So good. <laughs> Such a silly song. Oh, so it's so silly. fun. Oh, that's the uh, best. And I, I like that you put that playful energy into it, you know, um, that you were talking about. Oh, that yeah. you're like, I was kind of searching for that energy and you put it right into the song. I love it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> So I don't want to keep you too much longer because, um, you know, you've been so gracious with your time and spending it with us today. But I do want to talk a little bit just about, you know, your upcoming album and the tour and all that. So this is your third album, if I'm not mistaken. Right. And um, you. So what can our audiences expect? Or what can your audience expect from this new album? Yeah. Yeah, I would say so. It's it's funny because it's technically it's like technically my second, but it's really my third because the first project we came out and it was called i met you when i was 18 the playlist but it's i, I yeah. definitely see it as my first album but anyways that's super irrelevant um <laughs> but yeah 
Um, I, I always hate um, it when I do that. I start to give like information. I'm like, why am I, why, why am I saying this? Like, yeah, why am I talking about I this? Know, but, no, I know. that I'm was like, relevant. Why? It, even, it was, what does it, even it was fine. Like, it was totally fine. So funny. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, basically it's, um, it's, it's a little, it's a little different for me, but it's, uh, it's a lot of it's, yeah, just kind of going back and trying to find the thread of me, you know, the person, my joy and happiness from being a little kid and taking that with me as I, as I grow up a little bit. Um, cause without that, you know, I feel like growing up is boring, lame, sucks, stressful, and yeah. anxiety ridden. So yeah, mm-hmm. it's kind of just about, you know, getting back in touch with that part of yourself as you get older and, and, um, a lot of different vibes. There's, there's a lot of ups and downs, light and dark energy on the album, a lot of energy. Um, mm. Yeah, I'm just really excited for the whole thing to come out. Oh, I can't wait. It's, you know, I think a lot of people don't always realize for us, you know, artists, especially with a project as big as an album, how, you know, you've literally written some of these songs probably like over a year ago, I'm sure. Yeah. And so yeah. then to like sit on them. And then nowadays there's such a long lead time in order to get the albums like actually manufactured. Like, right. you know, so it's like literally you're sitting on a finished project for months like half a year exactly. sometimes so yeah it's like uh you're probably you're so close you are so close now <laughs> so close i can like finally breathe when it's out and then i get to go on tour which is going to be amazing and um yes and there's going to be a lot more to you know yeah i'm super excited i mean because you know basically i put out my last album right before everything shut down so i didn't get a chance to tour it oh. i had all these tour dates and so oh. far we've, we've announced we've only announced some tour dates there's more coming so i'm gonna go to a lot okay. more places that haven't been announced yet um so but cool. doing north america tour um starting in like a little over like about a month actually actually less than a month now um oh my so, gosh are you in yeah. rehearsals already yeah yeah been doing rehearsal just did audio rehearsals have production rehearsals coming up so the show is going to be i think <sighs> amazing i just gotta i gotta get in good shape before i go out because it's a long show and i run around a lot on stage mm. so I, I gotta get back I, in shape i know the feeling so i actually had covid about three weeks ago i finally mm. got it i thought i was one of those superhumans, but i'm i'm not yeah um, it's quite a blow to the ego when you actually get it You're like, oh my <laughs> i gosh, had the same experience not, <laughs> yeah it's like i'm not special dang it um yeah but I got COVID, had it for like a solid two weeks of just being so like tired and weak and coughing. And um, and then I got better just in time to play at this festival. And I kid you not, I hadn't barely moved in two weeks. I was so tired. <laughs> yeah, I just, for real. Oh, oh, I was just like, I can't even. So I totally, but yeah, every time I go on tour, it's like, you got to think about that. Like I have to have stamina. Like you got to run around yeah. that stage and be energized and give all of that 100%. energy for like probably 90 minutes i'm guessing yep yep yeah yeah you know you know how it goes yeah i know you're playing the greek i think right i'm so ex- yeah i'm playing the greek i'm so excited have you played there before no my first time oh it's I'm one so of my excited. favorite favorite venues like literally in the world the greek is magical um i'm gonna bug my agents to get tickets to your show <laughs> Oh yeah, just, or okay. just or just hit me up. You got to come. Okay, I would love to come. So you know, or I guess I could just be an adult and like buy a ticket, like <laughs> like a real no, person, just, like a supportive friend, because that's what we are now. <laughs> we're friends. Um, but um, make some TikToks and then we can yes, and then we can do the show. You, you know what? Oh my gosh, I'm I'm so excited for our TikTok day. You you better believe I'm yes. gonna like be bugging you in your DMs till you respond. You're serious about that? Hell yeah. yeah. No, I'm, you come I'm over. so down. I, I need the help. Your, your label's going to be like, we love your new friend. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. I feel like that's always <laughs> labels. They're like, please, please give us more content, please. Yeah, so, like more TikToks. Um, more, yeah, always more TikToks. Um, well, just thank you so much for your time. Is there anything else that, you know, you want to share with everybody or let anybody know before we let you go? Honestly, that was amazing. Thank you. Yeah, that was such a great convo. I'm so happy we got to talk about all the, you know, mental health stuff as well. So thank you. And um, yeah, this has been this has been great. Awesome. Well, you are amazing. You were just delightful to talk to. And um, yeah, our paths will cross soon. So good luck with the tour prep and everything. Thank you.
Okay, have a good one. We'll talk soon. Okay, cool. Bye. Bye. All right. Gosh, she's lovely. I know. So lovely. we need to have him over for like tea time. I feel yeah, like that was right. so great. Um, I w I do love doing these interviews because afterwards I'm like, I have a new best friend. <laughs> like, I I feel this. You know. It's, yeah. Um. You know, you always are like, I hope it's mutual. Like, we still refer to Sophie Tucker. Oh yeah, like, as our friends. Like we're like, oh yeah, our friends, Sophie Tucker. And we're like, oh yeah, all we've ever done. Oh yeah, our our BFF AJ. Yeah. Yeah, BFF AJ, and now Lauv, our yeah. our new our new friend friend. So. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go as far as say our new BFF. Wow. Okay. Oh. That's oh. That's a well. Oh. We'll see after okay. TikToks. Do you think? Okay. <laughs> what percentage of you thinks that he's actually gonna come and film TikToks with us? Oh, I want to <laughs> say I want to say his personality leads me to believe like a hundred percent, but then you know life happens. You have to drag me over here to film TikTok. So like realistically, yeah. and I'm your assistant, you pay me. Yeah. So realistically, to, like 5%. Well, most people have to be kind of like, think about our crew. Yeah. Oh my like, God. They work for me and I have to basically. They tell you no every day. Yeah. So, you know, and I, I just know like no one's like chomping at the bit to like film TikToks. I mean. So I'm going to say, I'm going to give him a solid 80. I think okay, 80% okay. that yeah. he's going to, it's going to happen. Okay. He uh, will respond to my DMs. <laughs> That's just first step. He just leaves you on read. On read. <laughs> oh, no, that's the worst. The worst when you're left on read. You're like, or he just replies K. <laughs> like, wait, you saw it. Like, and you know that I know that you oh. saw it. Like, that's the funny thing nowadays is you're like, there's no. You text me something the other day, and uh -oh. I almost I can't remember what it was, but I almost replied K just for the comedy factor. Oh my gosh! But it was like you were you were really serious, Ooh. and I I remember thinking. Man, I could make I could make her laugh right now just by replying K, but I didn't because I was like, you know what? That might not go over. <laughs> You're like, either she's gonna get that it's a joke, or she's gonna be like, what did I do? I have a bad habit of making jokes. You know, when things are like really tense, like that's my coping. Ooh, what mechanism. was I tense about? I don't. I'll have to go back and look. If I read it, I think I'll be able to to remember. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. <laughs> anyway, okay. I loved that conversation. It was so great. Yeah, yeah. yeah that was no, that, that was, was really nice. It was delightful. I always get like. Like a little, I'm a little sweaty right now because I just always get <laughs> sorry TMI. I always get a little is that nervous. What smell is? Probably. I'm gonna blame Luna actually. Luna, she is us. a little baked bean. She was like sunbathing. <laughs> a little, a little baked bean. She is a little baked bean. She has that like hot dog smell coming off her. Oh my gosh. She spent all afternoon on like you know those little stone steps. Yeah. Like the little individual ones. She was like laying on one, like <laughs> just, basking in just a sun spot, just, just literally cooking. roasting. <laughs> Um, Look at you. So I'm going to blame the smell on Luna. <laughs> um, but yeah, I do always just get like when I'm interviewing someone that I've never met, yeah. I don't know their personality. And so you're just like, I hope that, you know, I ask the right kind of question. So yeah, I always get a little nervous, but you know, that was, that was, that a was good great. One. And as I soon as we listening. started, I was like, oh, he's, he's going to be fantastic. Yeah, like, this is funny. He's going to carry this conversation easily. Yeah. I don't think we've ever had. I don't think we've ever had a bad guest, but we've definitely no. had guests that were like there. You could tell that they were enjoying the conversation. Yeah. You yeah. have, we've definitely had some that you could tell enjoyed it more than others. Yeah. And I would say the only time, like we did have one call where it was tech issues were happening the whole time. Oh yeah. That was a little stressful Yeah, and made it hard to enjoy, but the guest was lovely. Just wonderful. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, we've been really lucky with our, our guests yeah. being great. And as we were wrapping up that conversation, I sent out a big group text to everybody for next week saying, hey guys, oh, let's sit around a table and cause chaos. That will be so fun. Yeah, next week, my, like, not my entire crew, but several of my crew members, <laughs> including Mr. Eric Jackson yes. and Drew Steen, my drummer, and my keyboard player, Ryan. Ryan. Actually, let me pull up who we're going to have right now. We're going to have Alec, Alex Beer. Mr. Uh, Andy Nisley, Mr. Oh, Eric yes. Jackson, Mr. Wes, Wes and Corey. Wait, Wes and Corey will yeah. be here? Wes oh and Corey. my gosh, you guys yeah. are in for a freaking treat. I mean, you're going to get, you're going to be, it's going to just be ragging on Lindsay the whole time. Probably. <laughs> I was imagining how I was going to go and then my mind landed on that right as you said it. There's like, literally no other outcome. going to make fun of me the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> Especially as I, if I try to like make a good run of show yeah. you know and i try to like take it seriously oh, and, no. Like, no the more serious you take it the more they're gonna tear into it which is why i think i'm gonna try to take it super like serious you should walk in and be like okay guys Here's our agenda this is how this is gonna go yeah and then 
watch the chaos ensue. We love it. Um, Alec will say, okay, boss. And then that is okay, just going to be downhill and then, from there. Alec is such an instigator. Oh my God. Like, yeah. the fact that he's our production manager, he's supposed it's to be. terrifying. Yeah, it's absolutely terrifying. <laughs> he's supposed to be the one that, like, kind of reels it in and rounds the troops, makes sure everybody's, like, you know, best behavior. And Alec oh. is so good at his job, yeah. job. But also, he is an instigator at the same time, which Absolutely. makes it hilarious. Um, I actually want to play one more song from okay. um, you know, our new best friend. Our new, our new BFF. BFF, yeah. um, Lauv. So this is a song called 26. So here All we right. go. I don't really have much more to say about it than that. Let's listen. I just kind of like Russian roulette <laughs> like a song from him. So here we go. All right. Woo-woo. Um, do you want to share with everybody what you're doing right now, Fish? <laughs> I have Etsy up, and I am shopping for handmade um, possum stuffed animals. First of all, let me just... Okay, do you have a look on your face right now? Me? <laughs> a look on my... What? No, I'm not judgy at all right now. I'm annoyed. I, <laughs> I am feeling wholly judged right now. Okay, well, let me just, like, pause for a second and say that Half of my, actually, my full inbox it's... and my DMs from Fish, like any message that I've gotten from her, if you look back, they're all pictures and videos of possums. Yeah. Terrifying. Sometimes Terrifying. At like two in the morning, too. Oh, yeah. I get yeah. them, like, I'll be like, oh, what did Fish send me? Because every once in a while, there'll be like a fun video important. Or, an imp <laughs> or an idea, like, hey, we should do this or look at this cool dress, like, whatever. Yeah. But most of the time, I'll open it and it's like, oh my gosh, like it's an amazing video it's of a terrifying possum. video of yeah. a possum. No, they're amazing, Lindsay. <laughs> I just I feel like it's a very polarizing topic. You know, people like <laughs> really there's like is. a cult following for possums on the internet. I yes, I'm one of them. And we have one sitting. I'm proud right here. to be in that cult. Yeah. So Look, I, right here is a I don't cult. think that my life will feel complete until I raise a possum from a baby. And somehow you're going to find it and save it. I'm going to find it and save it. And <laughs> I feel like I probably need to like go, you know, take a class or something about like wildlife rehabilitation before I do that. But yeah. And then you just like, what, hang out in the forest till you find a possum? I mean, I don't know. I keep meaning to send it to you and I keep forgetting, but like two houses down from me, someone has a possum crossing sign. And I was like, this is meant for you, me. That's your best friend. Have you gone and yeah, talked to this I person? I haven't. Yet? No. Um, there are a bunch of hedges down their driveway. And I okay. remember from when I lived, I used to live in Burbank and we had hedges like that. Yeah. Possums like to have their babies in those hedges. And I remember one time oh. seeing baby possums in a hedge. And at the time I didn't love them like I do now. So I was like, Oh, who are you? I, I don't know. know that girl. Stranger. Yeah. Very weird. I know. I don't know her either. Um, but oh. now every time I walk past those hedges, I'm like, Oh, Come here, my, possums. oh my gosh. <laughs> Can you imagine the if possum. I text you one day and I'm like, no. Hey, I can't go on tour. I've adopted a baby I've possum. I've adopted a possum. And I need to, I bottle feed it three, four times a day, every three hours. Wouldn't so, like, it wouldn't surprise me at all. Um, I need to, like, prep myself for, like, a backup plan in case I get that text. Yeah. Um, I would, I would leave you for a possum. I believe it 100%. <laughs> right, right on, that's right up there with, like, getting offered to be a guide at Disneyland. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, gone. But, like, higher ranked, in my opinion. Yeah. Wait, which one's higher? Possum would be higher oh. than Disney for sure. Yeah. Do you know as many facts about possums as you do about Disney? I don't know that there are as many. Facts. <laughs> well, Fish knows a surprising, like shocking yeah. amount of um, facts about Disney. I used to be very lonely. <laughs> also, Fish has like a bunch of facts about everything. If you start a conversation randomly about like citrus trees, she'll know exactly the time of year that they're supposed to be planted and the time they should like. She Can knows just, something about everything. I do this thing where like late at night, I'll I'll be reading something and like I'll get curious about it, so I'll go Wikipedia it and you I'll and start. Drew, Drew's the same. Yeah, way. we we relate on this actually. He and I relate on this a lot, and then it's one of those things where we just keep clicking. And we go down rabbit holes yeah. of like, you know, thing to thing to thing. And two Sadly, hours later. I do that on like doom scrolling on TikTok well, or like, no, honestly, I do that while costuming, like while yeah. I'm working at wardrobe, I will spend, I'll, but then again, that's not something that's going to make me a more intelligent, better human for society. Well, you know, I mean, it's like if the end of the world comes, you can make some your really talent is yeah. dresses. Yeah, um, you make great dresses. It's like, yeah, instead of having all this knowledge in my head, I just have like a hundred screen shares on my computer <laughs> of like screenshots I've taken um, of like 20 different options of a red dress. 
Yeah. You know, there you anyways, go. that's, that's valuable. Same, same thing. Yeah. And I mean, mine's at least kind of going towards a craft and a career, yeah. but I, I still admire your knowledge on the most random subject. I've I think it's very to, cool. Thank you. Thank you. I've had to stop myself a lot late in the last several years of my life from like chiming into conversations and being like, well, actually I don't want to be that person. And I was, <laughs> oh, <but> you are. <laughs> You are. Maybe you reeled it in. Maybe. Actually, I reeled it in a lot. I reeled it in a lot because I, I was that person. Was dying when we were at. We were actually all hanging out. It was Mark, Eric, Ryan. We were all hanging out at Eric when Eric was in town. Yeah. And somehow we got on the subject of LA highways. Oh no! And oh, no. you chimed in with a actually, and what? I just remember me and Mark. I love. I freaking love Fish's boyfriend. <laughs> um, we. I don't think you realized at first that we were even making fun of. Well, because he re- he deals with this twenty four seven. So we jumped in and started like talking about like, <laughs> the buggies, the yeah. horses and buggies trying to hurry up and merge onto the highway. <laughs> well, actually, we have one of the shortest highway on ramps yeah. in America, and the reason it is that way is because we had some of the first highways in America and they just was exactly oh but Mark just, and I were laughing so hard and you were still talking about the facts <laughs> of the highways of, of LA as we were just, we have fascinating history in this city okay it's and a great we city. love that we have you to share that with us and um, I will continue oh. to make fun of you for it so don't ever change um, oh god it's, it's a lovely thing um I'm so glad someone <clears throat> finds value. <laughs> I do. I appreciate it. Um, but anyways, uh, going back to, Oh, you saving possums. It reminded me of my childhood. I always tried to save baby birds, oh, yeah, especially yeah. during like the monsoon season every year birds would, you know, fall out of the nests or their nests would get knocked to the ground and these little baby birds and me and my sisters would go out and look for nests that had fallen and we would try our best to like raise these baby birds and feed them with little eyedroppers and I never succeeded. I was going to say, how many died? Oh, all of them. All of them. Yeah. Same. But like, I, and it was heartbreaking yeah. <laughs> every time. I remember my mom started being like, guys, just let them die. Just, just <laughs> let's put them out of their misery. Oh, God. You know, my mom has one of the softest hearts in the world. She like, called me the other day about a baby bird that she, you know, found and she was like oh. teary eyed and cry- my mom has literally the softest heart. She can't kill a spider. Oh, <clears throat> um, but anyways, I just remember trying, you know, falling in love with these little baby birds and trying so hard <laughs> to like raise them and get them to fly. And uh, I just want to quote Allie here on discord. She quoted me saying, I would leave you for a possum. And I feel like oh. that's an important quote. That we should that, that should be put on a t-shirt. It should be. That's a great t-shirt. I would leave you. For, I would leave you for a possum. Hey, merch idea, anyone for the Christmas tour? Actually, I mean, Fish has a custom-made I I made it. sweater that yeah, you made. Yeah. She designed it herself and then had it printed. It's actually pretty amazing. I remember texting you last year and being like, "Okay, hear me out. I got my ugly Christmas sweater." And I just need you to know ahead of time what it is. And I sent you a photo of it. And you were just disgusted. Oh, absolutely. You were so- <laughs> absolutely. But at the same time, when I saw it in person, I'm like, that is a fantastic, ugly Christmas sweater. <laughs> it but is. Is it a sweatshirt or is it a sweater? It's a, well, it's a sweatshirt. So. But no, that means yeah, it bounce. You know. No. I just couldn't remember if it was yeah. knit or not. I would, um, I would kill for a knit Yeah, one. that would be a little I more impressive. I would pay good money <clears throat> for a knit version of that. Like yeah. hundreds of dollars. I know my managers are listening. So like, guys, should we consider taking Fish's sweatshirt and making that the official sweatshirt for the merch on tour? I think so. Just like the Lindsay, Lindsay Sterling Christmas tour. Yeah. Possum. Like, let me send you guys my artwork. Maybe um, you should post it on the Discord. Yeah, I'll find. Let me find a. I'll go back find and a photo, find a photo. Find yeah. Let's put it on there. <laughs> see what the people say. Um, I want to. I want to go back. I don't know if you remember this or if you. Rem- yeah, I don't know if you remember. I don't mean to question your. My mem- memory is fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when we first met on the airplane ride to Orlando, or maybe it was back from Orlando. I can't remember. Which was a very funny airplane. It ride. was a very funny <laughs> airplane ride. Um. You and I, one of the first things we bonded over was how much of a zoo our houses were individually as children. Yes. I remember it being weird because that was such a thing that like no one else in my life I've ever met had as much of a zoo as my family had. Yeah. And then I met you and you're like, oh no, me too. Yeah, me too. We bonded on this. Yeah. Every animal you can think of as a pet. Yeah. I mean, we owned it. We we did. Ferrets. Yeah. Rats. Yep. Um, but you had rats too, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's another unique, weird, unique thing. thing. Yeah. People, whenever they hear that, I'm like, no pet rats are the freaking They're the best. best. Yeah. People are very shocked. And I'm going to just hear they from are, two though. rat yeah. owners of the past. <laughs> Multiple cats, dogs. Yep. Yeah. The ferret's a funny one. I had chinchillas. I had iguanas. I had like yeah, angel parakeets. fish. Yeah. Parakeets. Yeah. Or the fish tank. All sorts of different birds. 
um it was <clears throat> both of us we had we had chickens and horse oh, we had see i didn't have the farm animals because I, well, I didn't have the iguanas so it's like we equal out <laughs> each other and the chinchilla is pretty cool i didn't yeah the the i love my chinchilla his name was samwise little samwise Gamgee. oh my gosh okay i love it when pets have first and last names me too like I especially like a little Cindy Crawford, you know, like <laughs> like Samwise a human Gamgee. name, yeah, like yeah. a human name. Especially like it's funny when it's like a celebrity name. Yes, the it's like well, Adina Menzel, <laughs> and it just cracks me up. It's one of my one of my favorite things. Oh man, I found it. I gotta. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Put that in Discord. It's All it right. is a really good. It's a great sweater. Yeah, because sometimes ugly Christmas sweaters are so loud and colorful that they're yeah. actually like you're like this is so actually ugly but this one's like ugly cute so this is an existing photo of a possum and i dragged it into photoshop and drew over it and then i Look uploaded at that face, it though it's <laughs> terrifying it's the best That's... i mean you did a fantastic job thank you editing it and like making that into a, oh my gosh people Look, are people love it it's exploding okay guys thank you managers i i don't know if we have a choice anymore it's a winning photo of a possum <laughs> That's hysterical. <laughs> People in the Discord are freaking out. By the way, anybody's oh, welcome gosh. to join our Discord. Oh my um, gosh. Okay, people people want one. We yeah. might need to give the people what they want. Maybe that's like a VIP thing. That's a VIP right. gift. You're gonna have so many VIP people be like, what, what is, is that? Because there's like there, you know, the VIP is a mix of like people who are like fan fans. Yeah. And like families. Right. Who come and they wanted to surprise their kids. And so like the fan fans will like love something like that. But then the family who's like, I just wanted to bring my daughter because she plays the violin. Why did they give yeah. me this creepy possum sweater? Allie asked me if the possum has a name and the di when I get a possum someday, its name will be Fig. Okay. Fig the possum. Yeah. Uh, okay. So uh, there's, there's a story about when I play Dungeons and Dragons, I play a druid who, um, who can only, she's a, she's Sorry. a druid elf that can only turn into a possum because she's, she's kind of bad at being a druid and she often gets stuck in the form of a possum and can't turn back. So I love what a nerd you are. This is fantastic. <laughs> like I'm, you know, and that's the thing. Okay. Everybody is such a nerd in one way or another. And if you're not, you need to find something to be nerdy about because it makes you interesting. Like yeah. firm belief in that. I love the words you're like <laughs> druin and dungeons and dragons and turning and yeah, it's, uh, I mean, you would make a great D and D player. I think I would. I think you'd make a fabulous Should D and D player. Should we start a D and D club on tour? Oh my God. I wonder how many of them would be into it. Wes think... would be into it. Andy could get into it. I, I think. feel like Andy could be really yeah. into it. Andy, you're yeah. here. Tell us. Glenn would love it. Glenn, Glenn would be, full, Glenn would be in. full in. Yeah. We'd have to like tie Eric up and like put tape over his mouth. But I feel like Eric, once he got into it, would love it. Yes. Yeah. The only people that I feel like wouldn't real like really wouldn't get into it are I think we could not force the dancers. Oh, the to dancers do it. would they would put on their adorable little outfits and go out to dinner while we played. Yeah, yeah. They'd, be like, they'd be like, absolutely not. Because they are so much cooler than us. Well, this is true. At all this times of the very day. Very true. Yeah. Um, I don't remember. Did we tell the story of like the dancers going out already? I don't think so. Time has no meaning to me anymore. So I feel I have like no we idea. might have told it last week. What did we do last? Oh, it was just us. Yeah, <laughs> it was. Gosh, bless anybody who listened last week. I mean, I really enjoyed it, but I was so. I think we were both very sleep deprived. We were so sleep deprived. You were still sick. You were still I quite was sick. Still very sick and sleep deprived. I was worried you were going to give me COVID. Really? No. no. <laughs> oh, I was like, no, oh, I've, I've been negative for a long time, but I was pretty ill and yeah. just so like you kind were so of tired, loopy. Yeah, it was almost the perfect time to do. You were slap happy. In a I way. was slap happy. Yeah. yeah. So it was actually quite a fun show. We giggled a lot, yeah. but it's also looking back on it, like, did anyone else enjoy that? I hope or was so. I like drunk sleep? That you know? was the hardest I've laughed in a really long time. I don't even remember what we were laughing what about. We talked about. I know. I'm gonna have to go back and listen to it. Well, that's what happens with good friends. Exactly. You just lose <laughs> sense of time and sense the topic you know um oh, should we man. take a caller we have oh well, let's, let's give people a chance to yeah ask to we've call got in. five minutes we got let's... five minutes we're gonna take one caller and then i think after that we'll call it a day all right let's uh okay. oh are the callers coming in we got two we got three i'm gonna give them a chance to all right this is always like russian roulette um okay let's see we're gonna let's see let's see uh oh isn't that Lacey? No. No. That's not Lacey. It's oh. also like, I think 4 a.m. where she is. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. All right. We're going with it. We're inviting Haley in. Wish us luck, everybody. 
<laughs> Wish Haley luck that her internet connects. <clears throat> Hi, Hi, Haley. Oh, wait, Hi. we're going to... We can't, oh, wait, we got to put it. Yeah, hold. sorry. We need headphones. Wait, okay, okay, go ahead. Sorry, say that one more time. Hi, Haley. <laughs> Hi, how are you? <laughs> we are good. We're like both leaned together sharing a set of headphones. It's chaos. Here yeah, tonight. this is a little wild. Um, where are you calling from? I'm from Pennsylvania. Oh, nice. Ooh, that's where Andy and Lacey yeah. on our tour are from. Also, Lizzie Hale and Hailstorm are from there. So there I know several great humans from that state. I um, love Pennsylvania. When I go there, every time we tour through Pennsylvania, we I make the bus drivers stop at a Sheets because they have the best beef jerky I've ever had in my life. Really? Just a little fact about, well, actually. Well, actually, little, like, Sheets is the earliest form of... <laughs> Just kidding. Sheets. Okay, I'm going to stop. Um, so I see you're holding a violin in your picture. So are you a violinist? Yes, I yeah, I just started playing probably in February, I think. Oh, wow. How's it going so far? I'm pretty good, actually. That's amazing. Congratulations. Yeah, that's very exciting. Mm -hmm. Well, Sterling just started a new instrument, too. I did. I'm like brand new. Yeah. I'm, I just started the piano. So I, um, that feeling of like starting a new instrument, it's overwhelming. I mean, I don't know if you feel that way, but I've felt that way with now both instruments I've started. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit, but yeah, motivation. Okay. Motivation, absolutely. Um, uh, let's see. I was I was about to ask a dumb question. I'm not going to ask that. Um, I was about to ask what was your inspiration to start the violin, but I'm <laughs> hoping that the answer is me. <laughs> yeah, you. <laughs> wow, the so, arrogance. I am so sorry, Haley. The ego. The ego. I'm sorry. It's palatable. I, I really shouldn't have said that. What if I'm the inspiration? <laughs> You you know what? You very well could have been. I mean, you don't play the violin, but no, you sure are awesome. I don't. No, I don't play the violin. Um, I don't know that I ever but there's could. also a lot of violinists out there. So there are. It, you yeah. know, it, it, Maraid. Maraid. Yeah. Um, Alexander Rybeck. Um, Andre Rayu. Quick, name five more. Okay, yeah, yeah, I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> Shoot. Um, so uh, I guess uh, what uh, what are you most excited about that uh, you are learning right now? Like what kind of music is your favorite to learn? Um, well, I haven't really started any actual music. I'm learning out of like a book, but I think I'm going to start to try and learn Guardian. Oh, soon. that's cool. I mean, that's how I learned for years. I was just playing out of those books and, you know, there's like the exercises or like the little, I remember, you know, songs that had names like Go Tell Aunt Rhody and Allegro, you know, like <clears throat> those kind of those were the songs that I played for like years until I finally started to branch out. So that's that stuff's good. There, there's definitely a place for that. Those kind of music. Those kind of music. Those kind of music. Wow. Okay, Lindsay, calm down. We are so close to each other right now. Yeah, I'm like about to like kiss Lindsay's <laughs> yeah. forehead because <laughs> we're both sharing the headphones. Um, but yes, Guardian is a fun one. It's it's one of the more like happy songs. It I've is. Written. Yeah. yeah. Um, but anyways, well, thanks for chatting with us today. Thanks for calling in yeah, and, um, you. best yeah. of luck with the, oh, but did you have any questions for either of us? Um, do you have any questions about possums? <laughs> Fish is dying to tell you facts about possums. <laughs> Did you know I'll that they eat ticks? About Stop it, fish. <laughs> thank, thank you, Haley. Uh, well, <laughs> on that note, we're gonna we're gonna let you go. Um, and yeah, best of luck with the violin. We'll talk so hopefully soon. soon. Talk, yeah, keep us updated. Yeah. I want to know in the Discord well, how your your progress is going. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Bye. 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 So that that reminded me actually that reminded me of something that I was reading in the discord as we were, as you were having this great conversation, I was like keeping up with the discord. Um, our friend Allie. Yes. Actually. I, I encouraged her to start a TikTok over this. We were talking about brains doing things that you were, you were talking about your lisp and all of that. And we were talking about the things that our brains do that are kind of, you know, neurotic or funny. Yeah. Or and I guess Allie has a pretty <laughs> common problem where she mashes phrases and words together and the outcomes are hilarious she's so much so that she started writing them down and i oh said gosh. start a tiktok these are i was laughing so hard i said start a tiktok these are hilarious you know what though i feel like i 
have a little bit of that problem. I've talked to you about yeah. this before, how I feel like I like sentences come out sometimes backwards yeah. for me. Like, it's like, I know what I want to say and I'll start with the end of the sentence. And then I realize I've started the sentence wrong. And so I have to, yeah. in my brain, switch it. And sometimes it causes for really odd sentences yeah. to come out of my mouth or we, weird words that shouldn't be together. And, um, and I've wondered before if that's part of the dyslexia because it kind of comes from the same idea of like your yeah. thoughts having to cross over the brain. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, so I, I don't know. I, that's funny. That I mean, I has that too. I want to read one that she wrote because I was yeah, laughing so hard. Um, she said, once there was a chow chow in for grooming and I went to ask the receptionist, is that chow getting a haircut? But instead I asked her, is that a chair? <laughs> <laughs> the, <laughs> the, one, the one before oh, yeah. that is, uh, one time I mixed up, I don't care and it doesn't matter and said to someone right in their face, I don't matter. <laughs> <laughs> no, Allie, I'm, yeah, I should start writing mine down yeah. too. And that's part of why I like, it's been a great exercise to interview people, but also it's part of the reason I like it so nervous because yeah. I'm like, am I going to like mess up my words yeah. and say something embarrassing or oftentimes yeah. inappropriate? Yeah. That's the one that worries me the most is when I've said very like innuendo things and I'm like, whoa, yeah. that came out. That was not supposed what to be. What did you say on the photo, on our, on the album cover photo shoot? Oh my God. <laughs> on the album photo shoot, um, there was this, this um, prop that I had, it was a giant prop and this gal kept coming over. She had made this prop and she kept trying to like, you know, get it to be back in its original shape. And she would kind of like, you know, waft it and like fluff it. <laughs> and I said, every set needs a fluffer. Oh God. And if any of you know what that means, that's an actual term for any, I won't go into you it. You don't have to go into it's it. It's an actual term. It's and a PG-13 show. A set <laughs> fluffer it's a thing and I was my eyes got so big as I said it and I was I like you kind of looked at me and you're like do you think she heard that yeah it was because I didn't I thought to me, she didn't react so I was like oh now I don't want to call attention to it but if she heard it and just pretended not to react and she's like oh my gosh like oh it was so <laughs> embarrassed and so red oh but what a great memory what a great freaking memory well yeah. on that note yeah everyone thanks for joining us today that was a great that show was so much fun um we just love you guys I love this community I love that we can you know have this weekly meetup and um, just appreciate all of you for coming and supporting. Oh no. What? I just, I have, <laughs> Oh no. I was trying to get all sentimental. That's okay. Let's keep, let's keep going. Okay. All right. This is normal. This is just every day. I'll be like in my zone and I just see fish start <laughs> laughing at me and I'm like, okay. Uh, but I feel like I get to sometimes do it back to you. Yeah, you do. So it's mutual. Yeah. It's no, it's, it's mutual. It's you, like, you, you make me laugh all the time, Linz. Oh, well, gosh, thanks, Fish. <laughs> such a trooper and such a friend. Okay, everybody, we're signing out. Thanks we'll so much. We'll talk to you guys next week. See you next week. Bye.